welcome to our new discussion. We are going to use this site as an example and for demonstration. This site is located within a school compound. When we came to this school for the first time to do our assessment, the first thing we wanted to know was the site where the farmer was proposing to have the ponds. After being shown this site, we started looking into the site selection factors that we discussed in the previous video. The first thing we considered was access road to the proposed site. We found that there was a passable road coming all the way to the school and through to the proposed site. The second factor we considered was the type of soil. Using the soil test methods discussed in our earlier videos, we found the soil was good for fish farming. When we considered the slope, we noted that it was gentle all the way from the possible water sources through the proposed site and down towards the lower stream coming to water availability. We found out that there was a permanent stream that was flowing through the side of the proposed site. However, this stream was lying in a gully and it could not be possible to draw our water from it. Fortunately, there was a small permanent tributary to this stream. This tributary was flowing over the upper edge of the school compound. This tributary was drawing its water from a spring on the opposite end and directing it into the stream. The level of the stream was high enough to have its water diverted to fill our ponds. We then used a spirit level to identify a point where we can divert our water and direct it onto our site. From that point, we then pegged a channel that was to pass through the proposed site and join the mainstream further downwards. The next question was, where do we place our first pond? Remember, the first pond will determine the position and layout of the ponds that will follow later during expansion. We decided to put the first pond at the upper edge of the proposed site so that there will be enough space for expansion and additional ponds. Before pegging and construction of the pond, it was very necessary to consider how the water will get into the pond and out of the pond when draining. of our channel, it may be possible to get the inlet water directly from the channel and the outlet flowing out through the opposite side. However, there will be a challenge here. This is because when the farmer will need to add another pond on the outlet side, it will affect the drainage of the first pond. We may also decide to put our outlet on the adjacent side, but remember the same problem will occur when 
the farmer wants to add extra bones towards that end. The best approach therefore will be to make another smaller diversion so that we redirect our inlet towards the other side of the pond. This channel will run parallel to the previous channel at a distance that will accommodate the size of ponds that we want, all the way down and back to the previous channel. Slightly after the diversion of this channel, we will deepen our main channel so that we can use it as a drainage channel for the ponds that will be constructed from that point downwards. This channel will have to be deeper than all the ponds that will be constructed for efficient drainage. At this point now, we can comfortably put our inlet on the newly diverted channel and the outlet will be on the deepened drainage channel. From that point, it will be easier to add more ponds along that line. While using the common inlet channel to supply water to all the ponds. But in this case, another drainage channel will have to be constructed on the other side to drain the newly constructed ponds. <laughs> if the farmer wants to construct even more ponds, he will use the same approach as we have discussed earlier but in this case, the initial drainage channel will also be used to serve the row of ponds that will be on its left.